Uh, okay, so my external storage drive, like my USB drive that I plug into my computer and copy files to, right. is a single spinning hard drive in an external chassis plugged okay. into USB 3.0. Okay. Oh. So it's pretty fast, but I have this fear that, like, if I ever dropped it, yeah. one, it's a spinning drive, so you know it's not going to survive the drop. Mm -hmm. Two, it's a single spinning drive. So if it didn't survive the drop, or if it crashed for some other reason, maybe a zap from, you know, whatever, the problem is that it's the only... There's no redundancy. Right. It's like the drive. Right. There's one single storage device within that. I feel like that's least like you. I feel like this is one of those cases where, how did this happen? And that's where we're going with this tonight, Sasha. <laughs> Uh-oh. So I have not one, but two Kingston SSD Now 38, what are these? These are the, uh, the 960 gigabyte UV500s. Uh, that I picked off, uh, I pick, you can pick these up on Amazon. They're M.2 drives. Now, these are SATA. So, like, basically, these are like the hard drives of now that you would put into your computer. Right. There's no spinning parts. There's nothing that is going to fail if you drop it from a reasonable height. Um, and, and it's very much less susceptible to something like shock or, uh, or just day-to-day. Like life day -to -day. with Sasha. Well, yeah, it could be, <laughs> right? I mean, proof. how many times do I hear about somebody who's got their drive plugged into the computer, they're yeah. copying their files over, and the dog knocks it off the desk? Mm. We'll say the dog. That's what they tell us. Yeah. But, you know, that's... Dog ate the homework. You know, that's exactly how it goes down. So why do I have two? Well, I need redundancy. I want to be able to have, like, a RAID 1 scenario going on. But how would I possibly do that with M.2s? Any ideas? Keeping in mind, I want to replace the need for an external spinning hard drive. Huh. And so are you huh. still you wanting it to be via the USB 3? No. Jeff, come on. USB 3 is so yesterday. No, I understand how that, about but you're we saying go that's how you're using it for portability. So USB 3.1 Rev 2. Huh? Excuse me. I know. I know. <sighs> okay. So let's show you. I'm going to jump over to the unboxing table and show you how this is going to be done. All right, so here they are, folks. We've got two Kingston M.2s. Again, these are SATA drives. Make sure you don't grab the NVMEs because it's not going to be compatible with what we're doing. And I've been seeing these types of devices on Amazon over the past little while, and I thought, dude, we have to take a look at these. Just a nice little card to say, have a nice day. Please give us a rating. And we've got our instruction book, which we will refer to, but as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. Nice and simple stuff, uh, but... Uh, Let's get further into the box. Okay, screwdriver. We have a lot of those. Uh, we've got some feet, like non-slip feet. Hmm. We've got some screws and all that kind of stuff. And we've got a USB-C cable. Let's get into that. Oh, there we go. So this is USB-C. Again, this is USB 3.1 Rev 2. I kind of alluded to that. What does that mean? It means that this external chassis is going to provide a connection to your computer at up to 10 gigabits per second. What does that mean? Well, what do we know about the SATA 3 specification? It's 6 gigabits a second. So if you wanted an external unit that was as fast as could possibly be, well, consider that these cards here, these M.2 chips, are 6 gigabits a second, okay? So this device here is going to connect to your computer at up to 10 gigabits a second. That's why the revision 2 is important. So am I going to get 10 gigabits a second? No, uh, not, not in a RAID 1 scenario. I'm going to get 6 because these devices are limited to 6. Now, I could set these up in a RAID 0, and then I'm going to get 10 gigabits a second for sure. Uh, but in the case of a RAID 1, I'm going to get the limitation of the SATA uh, bus, which is... Uh, uh, six gigabits a second. So I say that because revision two of the USB 3.1 standard is important. If you're shopping for one of these types of devices, um, if you go with revision one, it's half the speed, five gigabits a second. So then you're not going to be maximizing the speed. Keep that in mind. You want the full speed of these devices. That looks like a football field with little yes. inside. It totally does. Oh, do you see that? <laughs> 
<laughs> it absolutely is a touchdown, folks. So we've got LEDs on the front. These LEDs are going to show activity as well as whether or not this is important, okay? Because what happens if an M.2 fails? This is going to show if an M.2 has failed, okay? Now, maybe you mentioned, is that a metallic case or is it plastic? It is metallic. Okay. This is a aluminum case, okay? The black, you may think it's plastic. And if you look at the photos on Amazon, this particular one, it looks like it might be plastic, but no, it is aluminum. Very nice. And so that helps with the heat dissipation too. M.2s can get a little warm. This one should do pretty well, and it's got some vents in the front. Now, that said, it doesn't have to be this one. I'm going to link to this at cat5.tv slash USB flash. However, I also have linked to a couple of other ones that I recommend there, uh, which are going to do about the same thing. You just choose the one that you like. So if you look here, these are the M.2 slots. So we actually have two M.2 slots up to uh, 3380 uh, millimeter. Okay, so you have to make sure that the one that you buy, so the chassis that you buy, is compatible with the type of M.2 that you buy. Um, so these are 3380 uh, millimeter uh, chips that I got from. Uh, uh, these are the Kingston uh, SSD now, and they're going to basically fill this, the 80 right there. Uh, it, it, you can get other sizes as well, right down to like. Uh, 3330s or whatever they happen to be. I don't know what that size is. That's awfully small. Uh, okay, so let's uh, let's see if we can put this thing together. So this is, what is incredible about this is it's going to give us a RAID 1 architecture in the form factor of uh, our standard SSD. Our, our standard external SSD, I should say. I, I feel the need to point out you have not read the instructions. I haven't yeah. read the instructions yet. Jeff. He yet. said yet. He's going, to read them. He's going to read them if he encounters well, yeah. a problem. If I have some trouble with this, how difficult is this, though, to... Okay, grab our M.2. Oh, and I don't have a, a box cutter with me. If you read the instructions, maybe you would. Yeah. Jeff, throw me a box cutter. Do you I have one in front of you? I didn't read the instructions. I don't have one. Oh, okay. Oh, here we There's go. There's got to be one. I got one. Oh, Boom. look at that. Look at that. I could have pretended that you brought it to me and saved the day. Yeah. I just, you know. had, to, I just had to look around. That's all. So you need a box cutter. <laughs> <laughs> and Marshman is like, amen, brother. <laughs> there we go. So there's our first M.2. Remember, this is a SATA M.2. I've gone with 960 megabytes, which is about the biggest that you're going to find right now. Uh, and this is, because it's SATA, not NVMe, it's going to be compatible with this device. So I'm going to just pop that in there and put it down there. Now I can grab the screw to... I fix that, which I think is the silver one. Did you say I think? Well, there's two silver ones and four black ones, so I expect that the two silver ones are the two NVMEs. <laughs> the instructions would tell you. I'm telling you the instructions here, <laughs> folks. If it doesn't work, you're going to see it not work. There you go. M.2 number one. Think we can add a second one without reading the instructions, Jeff? Do you think this can be done? I feel like you're going to do it anyway just because you're the bald nerd. Yeah, you know what? If it doesn't work and I did it, then there's something wrong with the, pro with the product. Is that uh, the works? chat room's asking if you said <laughs> megabytes. Yes, 960 gigabytes. Did I say megabytes? Apparently you said megabytes. Nice. See, I am stuck in the past here, folks. This is the little tiny gold thing to be able to affix the... M.2, which is, in fact, 960 gigabytes. We're talking a terabyte here, folks. Does that make a little more sense to you in this, 1999? Oh, wait. It's 2019 as I do this. <laughs> Flux capacitor's working. There we go. Okay. So what has me so excited about this, Jeff? Sasha? Uh, it's smaller than a hard drive. I'm going to have to read the manual. Oh, yeah. Oh. Because we have Toggle dip switches. switches. Dip Ooh. switches. Let's call them dip switches, shall we? Read the manual, Jeff. Uh, you so are what could these switch. possibly mean? All right, let's get in here. Now, this makes some good TV here, folks. RAID settings. That, those dip switches are for RAID. So we have the capability of doing RAID 0, RAID 1, JBOD. Let's see if I can get a focus on this for you. See the dip switch settings? Wow, Robbie, hold still, dude. There you go. So those dip switches are actually going to give me a RAID 
out of my USB external drive. Very cool. So RAID 1 is what I want. RAID 1 is going to be 1 is down, 2 is up. 1 is down, 2 is up. This device is now set as a RAID 1 with two 960 gigabytes um, and uh, Pardon me, I was going to say NVMe, SATA M.2s. And so those are, in all essences, each one of these chips is a hard drive. So we have one, two hard drives. If one of them fails with a RAID 1, what do we know? It's going to be mirrored to the other drive. So if one fails, it's going to light up red on this side here. And then I just simply remove that chip and replace it, and it will rebuild, and I'll have all my data. Or I can just operate off of the one chip as I wait, and it's still going to have all the data. Not going to have any problems there. So then we're going to put this right back together like this. A uh, couple quick notes. On Amazon reviews, somebody mentioned that uh, the PCB was not solidly affixed to the case. I'm not experiencing that whatsoever. Uh, there are itty bitty screws on the PCB. I'm going to let the camera focus. You can see that the PCB is in fact screwed into the chassis. Okay, so we don't have any issue with it flopping around. I wonder if maybe they didn't, uh, if they didn't screw down their M.2s and didn't do that correctly. So let's put this together, just like that. And we've got four screws. Oh, look at that, Jeff. Didn't even have to read the manual for that. I'm guessing the black screws go like this. Well, that one kind of makes sense. Yes, but I sir. Would, I still feel vindicated. Wow, that you Robbie, have to read you figured it out. Something after the three years that you've been in tech. You finally figured it out, bald nerd. <laughs> it's a slight under-exaggeration. Here we go. That is good TV right there. There you we know, have it. It's funny, as you're like just putting in those screws, I'm thinking, how many people are watching this? Just watching a guy screw in screws. Yeah, what is this? <laughs> what is this junk? YouTube, please comment below. I know you're going to. There you have it, folks. So this is, now this one I've gone with the Glow Trends, so keep that in mind if you go to cat5.tv slash USB flash and you really, really like this design. I like it. Uh, I do like that it has a little bit of uh, a grill at the front that's going to allow some heat to get out uh, a little bit better. It is aluminum. It's got the LEDs for, uh, an LED for each of the M.2s. It's going to show me the status as well as indicate data flow. And then on the back, I've got a DC input. So if I do need to supplement the USB-C, I can. I can put in a an extra five volts there and that's going to help us out uh, then we've got an on off switch which is kind of cool and usb 3.1 rev 2 is going to give us up to 10 gigabits a second on this device of course i'm going to get six gigs um, because i'm doing a raid one all right i'm going to jump back over here you want to hit that button for me the wide shot there you go so that's going to be, this is not a backup drive. I want to be clear that, hey, you don't use these kinds of things for your, your like corporate backup necessarily. Right. But to have some redundancy or something that you need to take on the go, this is like your USB external drive that now has redundancy built in. Mm -hmm. That is cool. And where can you find that, right? Like normally you're going to have to go with something much larger form factor. This is something that I can take anywhere and keep it in my laptop bag. Run, I could run a backup of my laptop and now do I have one copy on here and one copy on my laptop? Well, technically I have two copies on here because I've gone with the RAID 1. Right. You can do a RAID 0, which is a stripe. So with the two one terabyte um, uh, M.2s, I would get almost two terabytes of mm -hmm. storage. But then if one drive fails, I can potentially lose the data off of the, the failed Correct. drive. Yeah. So I wanted this specifically for redundancy. That's my purpose, not capacity. Because I could, for cheaper, get um, a, a spinning drive that has higher capacity, like an eight terabyte USB external. Right. right. This is going to cost me a little bit more, but I have that peace of mind of the redundancy. Mm -hmm. Now, what about corrupt files? You know, say mm -hmm. one of the drives, you do a backup, and it happens to be something that's got malware on it. Is it going to transfer to that's the other just drive? Bad. Yeah, well, I mean, that's bad practice, right? Well, so sure, but... That comes down to something completely different that that's not something that's saved by a RAID. Fair enough, but they're not standalone 
drives in that respect that is still run through the whole... You can run this as a JBOD, which yeah. is a, just a bunch of drives. So it would actually show on your computer as two hard drives when you plug this in. Right. And if it's running as two hard drives or PM mode, uh, you can then copy things to the first one and then copy it redundantly to the second or something like that. You could set yourself up with yeah. some kind of transfer like that if you wanted okay. to. Uh, but as far as like if, if ransomware hit, this where this would help in that kind of a situation, let's say I have a lot of data on my laptop and I don't currently have a good backup solution, maybe because it's 500 gigs worth of data. So right. that could be really expensive to put into the cloud. So with this, I've got about a terabyte of redundant storage. So there's two copies within this device. So I would then copy it from my laptop to this, and then I would put this in a safety deposit box. Sure. So then if my laptop ever got stolen, my laptop ever got encrypted, this is an what, what I call an untouchable backup. So this is something that would never be plugged back into my laptop unless I needed the data to, to be recovered. I so, want to know what kind of files you got that you put in a safety deposit box. Well, that's just an example of keeping it off-site, right? <laughs> right? So now, me personally, I have the advantage of I have home, I have work, I have yes. the studio, I have places that I can store things that are safe. Now, the average home user probably doesn't have the same that's scenario. Right, you have to, a safety deposit box is my example of a safe place to put this. Away yeah. from. It's not going to get plugged into a computer. It's not going to get damaged. Yeah. And it's untouchable by ransomware or some other kind of malware. Mm -hmm. So then if my computer got hit, then I go get that wherever it is. It could be mom and dad's house. Sure. Yeah, right? exactly. And, and then that becomes my so files. All told, to is this a from. really affordable solution? Like, all It's going to cost you a fair bit. I mean, okay. you're looking at, uh, I, I don't want to talk pricing no. because it's different from area to area, exactly, wherever you but are. But I'm talking, you're buying the chassis, yeah. which is a RAID enclosure. It's USB 3.1 mm -hmm. uh, revision B. So it's the current standard as far as 2019 standards go. It takes two, d two disks and you need to buy two disks for it. So right. it's like buying two hard drives right. plus a chassis. Right. So is it affordable? Um, yes. Is it inexpensive? Is no. it cheap? No. It, but you, it's you could definitely. Mind. Oh, it's more than peace of yeah. mind, Sasha. So this uh, this is more than that for me, but also for for like the business user or somebody who is pretty. You know, you're you're yeah. pretty kind of. You don't want to lose your family photos, mm -hmm. right? Right. So copy them to this. There's two copies now, and then put it somewhere safe. This is much better, much more reliable, much safer than what you're talking about, like a cheap consumer drive. Exactly. And this is going to work a lot a lot better, a lot faster. It's 10 gigabits a second. Transfer speed to the drives. The drives can write up to 6 gigabits a second. So the transfer speed of the bus is faster than the actual drives are. So think about that. If you, if you put one of these M.2s in your computer, it would be the same speed as connecting this externally. Right. Perfect. It's amazing. So, uh, so it, it is a, 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 a good solution. Mm -hmm. It's going to cost you some money, but it's worth, I think, the money. Yes. Um, and, and certainly, if you want redundancy, that's something that you need to consider. Check it out, cat5.tv slash USB flash to learn more about uh, the products that I use tonight. And there are a couple of other options there that you can look at as well. And uh, check it out. Let us know what you decide on, what you, what you think. Very cool.